Everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. A few days ago, I did a video on the new Unify U6 mesh access point. And I've had a lot of questions about actually wirelessly meshing this AP to another AP. Unfortunately, I only have one of those, but we will wirelessly mesh it to one of my other access points. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. If you'd like to support the channel, we do have memberships available now and you could join down below this video. First to start off, why would we wirelessly mesh an access point? Well, the answer is if you can't get an ethernet cable into your house or into your business, you could still plug in an access point and do a wireless uplink to give you some Wi-Fi connectivity. But if you can run an ethernet cable to the access point, I would highly suggest that. So the first thing we need to do, we need to make sure that we have wireless uplinking turned on in our Unify settings. And I'll show you both in the new UI and in the old UI. So in the new UI, we're going to go to our settings wheel. And then right under the Wi-Fi, we could see wireless meshing and I have it enabled. This is running on Unify version 7.0.20. Now let's go to the old classic controller and I'll show you where to find it there. All right, so if you're using the classic controller, you're going to want to go to your settings wheel and then under site. We could see uplink connectivity monitor and we want to make sure that that's checked off. So we could do our wireless uplink to the U6 mesh. Also we need to make sure that wireless meshing is enabled on our access points. So I'll show you in the classic controller first. We'll click on one of my access points and then we'll click on the settings wheel. From here we'll scroll down to radios. And under radios you could see enable meshing and you want to make sure that's turned on. Now let's take a look how you do that in the new UI. So in the new UI, it's pretty well the same thing. We'll click on my U6 LR and then we'll go to settings. Under settings, we'll go to our radios and we could see that we have the enable meshing and it's turned on. I believe this is the default setting for it. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do, we need to go plug this access point into power. I have an ethernet cord going from the U6 mesh to a PoE injector and it's plugged into the PoE side. We won't be plugging anything into the LAN side as this will be a wireless uplink. I'm going to go plug this in and we should see it pending adoption wirelessly. All right, and now we can see that the U6 mesh is pending adoption and this is only plugged into power. There is no LAN cable going to it. So I'll click on the U6 mesh and then we're going to adopt the device. All right, and now we can see that the U6 mesh has adopted into our controller. Under the U6 mesh, we could see that the connection is to my UAP in wall HD. So that's what it is wirelessly uplinking to. If we click on the U6 mesh, it will show us some speed statistics. If we take a look under our uplink, which is showing in brackets that it's wireless, we could see where it's uplinking to, which is my in-wall HD. We could see the signal strength, which is 99 at minus 30 dBm. And we could see the transmit rate is 720 megabits per second. And the receive rate is 540 megabits per second. And these will always change, but that's a pretty good throughput rate. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lock my iPhone to this access point, and then we'll do some speed test and iPerf test and see what results we get. So to lock my iPhone to the access point, we're going to go to my clients. And I know my iPhone ends in 196. So we'll search that up and we could see my Apple iPhone. I'll click on the iPhone, we'll press settings, and then we're gonna lock it to a specific AP. So we're gonna switch the AP not to be my U6 Pro, and we're gonna put it onto the U6 mesh and press save. Now it says before you continue, please take note, if the locked access point is too far away from the client, it will not get connected. If the locked access point is offline, the client will not automatically migrate to a new one. If the locked access point uses an SSID in a different AP group, your client will not be able to connect without entering new credentials and we'll press continue. The U6 mesh is on my main floor and I'm on my second floor. So we'll take a speed test from the second floor, from the main floor in the basement, as well as iPerf test and come back with the results. All right, now let's take a look at the results from the wireless uplink speed test and the iPerf test. And in my office, I was getting 91.5 megabits per second down and 83.4 up. On the main floor where the access point is sitting, I was getting 87.5 down and 100 up. And in the basement, I was getting 66.9 down and 41.4 up. Now let's look at the iPerf test. So for my office, I was getting 86 down and 72 up. On the main floor, I was getting 87 down and 98 up. And in the basement, I was getting 71 down and 37 up. So all in all, these speeds are pretty good for a mesh wireless solution. Obviously, they're not nearly as fast as when I had it plugged in. 
And you can check out my video on the U6 mesh. I'll put it down below in the description. Now, if I needed a wireless mesh device, I would go with the Access Point Beacon HD as this is what it's meant for. It doesn't even have any ethernet ports. It just has a power port that you plug into your wall. Using the U6 mesh, I would rather hardwire that into my network to be able to leverage the speeds. And then if I needed a wireless mesh, you could just plug these in anywhere in your home. But that's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.